So the first um, thing that's going on your mind is which resource do I actually need? And as Sheila just alluded, there are in fact several sets of guidelines available um, for use depending on what it is that you actually need to deliver. And today we're just going to cover some of the sort of principles behind each of those. Um, and then I'm going to try um, on left-hand drive to demonstrate uh, into those um, guidelines and how you can find them. What we all now know is that what we're dealing with here is a shared message. And it's something for the UK as a whole, um, so that all UK business can actually use it. So in the first instance, there's a set of guidelines for absolutely everyone. And because they're intended for everyone, they are more generalist um, than the ones that UK TI are going to be using to deliver its materials. So the first set uh, are for everyone to use, and they're called promoting UK business and your little card on your seat which has got the URLs for each of these um, so you'll be able to find them from that. More on those in a moment. As we were talking about before, UK Trade and Investment is the lead government agency uh, in delivering this and because of that it's important that our materials actually incorporate best practice, that we use things consistently and coherently across everything that we produce. Um, so as a result of that, the guidelines for UK trade and investment are fuller and more detailed and go into more things about position and relationships than the shared ones do. Um, those of you familiar with accessing CINET, uh, this is going to be no different. Um, the guidelines for the compelling message on CINET are actually a sort of an addition to the existing guidelines and the principles are just the same. So those that are used to finding resources on here won't find any difference in terms of the way that they have to seek things out. Um, so... So really where to start, where we're going to start is on the shared guidelines, the promoting UK business ones. Um, the basic principles of these guidelines are going to be the same that will underpin everything else that we do anyway. So a, a brief understanding of these will sort of set you up for the, the more detailed ones later. Um, what you have in these guidelines is the sort of background, I mean, you can see from the tabs actually, there's a very straightforward set of um, guidelines. There's a brief introduction that explains the compelling message for those that haven't been involved in hearing the presentations and going to the seminars like this. Um, there are some basic usage guidelines that will talk about size and shape and style, and I'll demonstrate those in a moment. And the fact that the the compelling message is there to influence the communications and not something that you actually plaster all over everything. Um, we also know that two marks have been created to express this message and how to incorporate those into the materials. And this is all about just using those marks appropriately and consistently and actually knowing when to use them and when not to use them. So. And broadly that's going to mean that they're only ever going to appear in certain formats, in certain colours, in black on white or in white out of uh, images, um, that they're not to be created in other fonts, they're not to be tampered with, they're not to be tilted at angles, they're not to be reconfigured in any way apart from those that are prescribed within the guidelines. And those of you familiar with guidelines, the the setups are going to be the same. There's going to be information on clear space. There's going to be information on positioning, on minimum size for web, on minimum size for print. Um, but in shared terms, uh, what's appreciated is that these are going to be working in the context of other people's identities and other people's guidelines. And the sorts of questions that will come up will be, well, 
how do I use that alongside the RDA identity that I'm already working with that happens to have a script um, signature payoff to it. And uh, the answer to that is we can't prescribe all those things. There's going to be a, an element of common sense here. And one of the first things to say is you may not want to use this on the front of a document, for instance. You might want to actually embed it inside the document or use it on the back. It's not something that you have to use in a certain way in terms of dealing with other identities. Um, so the main thing is to make sure that it's always used in an appropriate context. So although what we're looking for is to have it used as much as possible um, in order to get that critical mass, that doesn't mean that we want it stuck on absolutely everything, including the toilet door. We need it to be in relation to materials that express the sentiment of Springboard for Global Growth. Um, so things like internal, internally produced materials wouldn't necessarily need to have it applied. Uh, the difference then when we move on to our own guidelines, the guidelines for producing materials for UK trade and investment, are going to be that they provide more guidance in order to give us a bit more control. Um, the guidelines are going to contain the information for most, when I say most, rather than all, anticipated applications uh, in terms of co-branding, in terms of sizes, relationships and resources that you might need. So in terms of downloads there will be JPEGs, there will be EPSs, there will be all the things that you would expect contained within that. So, uh, as I said, they won't answer absolutely everything, but they should give you enough information to be able to work from. In terms of what the difference really is between them, um, the guidelines for design are fundamentally an addition to what's there. This isn't changing the UK trade and investment identity. This is just adding another dimension to it. So the design guidelines are actually quite straightforward in terms of just following on um, in the way that the current ones do. So the same sort of tabbing, the same sorts of section headings. So it will be, for those that are used to using them, it's a very user-friendly system. Um, in terms of the advertising guidelines, they are more comprehensive. And the reason they're more comprehensive is because this is a whole new campaign. It's a new style. And because of that, the toolkit that goes with this is more comprehensive. It has more resources in it. It has templates. It has suggestions for copy style. Um, so if you're going to recreate ads from scratch, everything is in there to enable you to do that. Um, also direct links to the image library and all those things that go with it. So. Um, there are, uh, as I say, there are more things in there, um, right down to sort of image and tone. There are some subtle differences, for instance, in the use of typefaces um, that are only applicable to advertising. So I'll sort of highlight that now so that when you do get the opportunity to have a dig through, you'll be able to find what the difference is there and why, why that's occurring. And as ever, there's going to be all sorts of questions that are going to arise after today, and the people that you'll need to deal with um, are those. I believe that, um, because we've had some little issues with the computers today, that uh, Owen won't actually be fielding the questions on events, and that will be Stuart Arrington. So, in the first instance, what we're going to, or I, I should say, I should attempt to do is to go straight into this um, shared website, first of all, and just try and give you a sort of a run through that in order that you can see what's there, um, and then we'll go on to do the same with the two um, fuller websites. So, uh, in the first instance, the URL for this is promoting UK business, um, and 
in the same way as it will work with, um, excuse me, I have to sit down to do this, I can't, <laughs> can't drive standing up. <laughs> uh, but you're giving up on it. The same sort of login procedure and things will work as it does with accessing the CI net. So those of you who are familiar with that, it will be the same, same way in, if you like. So if this all goes according to plan, and I have a, a temporary password for today, it won't work for any of you later, but it's so uh, that I can remember it's okay. And especially if I type it into the right field to start off with. So uh, our welcome is from Gordon Brown, and um, I dare say that uh, his title might have to change very shortly, but for the moment, uh, that's the right one. The introduction uh, here gives a rough pricey of what Sheila was saying this morning, and Danny has said in his previous speeches, um, in a substantially edited form, so that um, those that are actually in the position of producing materials can get that sort of overview um, without going into great depth on the USPs and things, but to get a sense of what it is that the UK is doing and the combined effort in terms of uh, the business environment. So as you can see, it is much shorter, and that is the introduction. In terms of guidance, um, this is a suggestion for the sort of people that should be using it, so it's uh, why to use it, who to use it, so um, scrolling down you can see that we've got a section on campaign marks, who should use them, using them, online use and things to voice. It's very simplistic um, and that is the intention here in that because this is intended for public companies, for organisations, um, in any form or walk of life, governments or um, private companies, it needs to be very simple for them to get the general principles and to be able to adopt it and hopefully to apply it sensibly. Um, so in terms of the usage guidelines, that tells me that says that is unplugged. I think it could be this one. I have to revert to plan B, Joel. That's what's lovely to try again. So this feels it's going to be a very long afternoon. <laughs> okay. In terms of the marks, we've, we've seen them now, so we know what they are. This just tells us what they are. Um, and following on from that, who should use them? It's suggesting uh, who the owner is, whether, if you're not sure whether to use them, who you should contact. Very straightforward. And then in terms of the actual application, this has been kept as straightforward as possible. Um, there is information on the typeface. Um, what it says is the marks exist in their own rights, they're not to be recreated, they're not to be reproduced in other typefaces or other languages. Um, very straightforward, there's a back button which helps me no end. Um, there are suggested minimum sizes for both print and web. I'm going to try and speed up a lot, otherwise when we get to the fuller ones it's going to take longer. Um, in terms of position, it suggests that the line should never be split and never be mucked around with, basically. Um, within this, there's also uh, the amount of clear space that needs to be around it, and that's in such a way as designers will know what to do with it, in terms of equalised sort of clear areas and things like that. So can you hear me at the back? I appreciate that I'm not uh, the most vocal when it comes to these things. Um, the colour palette that exists has been sort of equalised across all the 
um, various guidelines. So there were some fractional differences appearing between advertising and print. They are now all consolidated. Um, so in terms of checking against any materials that you're producing, um, just reference back each time to make sure that the red and the blue that you're using is the one that is now prescribed throughout. So I believe there has been one um, slight number change, but um, it would be very hard to spot visually unless you were in, uh, a designer, I think. In terms of the colour for the marks, it is the blue with the UK in red. Um, they can be used in black and white, they can be used down a bit further, white out of black or a background. And I think there's a background to just prove that. So, as with most other guidelines, there will be a suggestion of what you shouldn't do with them, which is the most sensible way to go there, um, in terms of not reversing it out of something that's too pale, not going out of something that's too dark, not tipping it up, squashing it, turning it around, tipping it over, um, anything that you would expect there. In terms of online use, um, there are a few things here that we ask people not to do, and that is not to incorporate um, the marks into the banner. Um, the banner should be used for the identity or for whoever else's identity that might be, um, but it should be embedded in such a way that it is connected with something that is conveying the message of Springboard to Global Growth either in terms of imagery or in terms of message. And I think that is pretty much the totality of what is on the shared guidelines. So um, I said they're very straightforward and very simple, and um, it's hard to make them any more complicated than they are. So they should be easy to use. In terms of... Um, accessing either the advertising or the design guidelines on CINET. The route in will be that for design work, uh, under, design guide, under the identity guidelines, there's a new element on the drop down, and that is using the compelling message. And within that, when you um, scroll down to using the marks, uh, the tabs there will mimic what's already existing in terms of the way that this site works. So um, we have positioning, clear space, minimum size, colours on screen, web banners, literature. There is a small amount of exhibitions that is there as a sort of an interim, but it is by no means any more than that at this stage. Um, Co-branding, which is going to be something that's going to be a we suspect quite a big issue when it starts to be multiple logos, multiple sign-offs, where on earth, where on earth, where on earth am I going to put this, uh, where should I put it, where shouldn't I put it. Um, and again there's going to be the things to avoid and the downloads. So I, before I sort of skip through that, in order to access the advertising, um, they are part of the marketing resources and if we come down to Advertising Toolkit, um, the drop down there is going to give us advertisement examples. And quite a few of the ones that have been used on the uh, information that you've seen around and some of the uh, early materials that have accompanied the speeches and things and the early ads are in there um, to be used. Um, so if I click on one of those for a moment. Um, you're going to see that they exist both as hit the world running and without having to open it up um, the exact equivalent of fast tracks the world does the same thing within there um, equally with the online examples there are current examples there ready and able to be used 
Um, advertising templates, uh, what we've got in here is actually a more fuller sort of kit of parts to be able to use. And each of the um, expressions, hit the world running and fast track to the world, um, have a number of templates available that are in all these sort of commonly used sizes and formats. Um, I'm sure the first thing someone's going to do is find a format and a size that isn't commonly used and not available there. But hopefully by looking at those you'll be able to get a pretty good idea um, of how um, you might go about something. So if a size isn't there I'm sure it's going to be similar to something that is. Um, So in terms of creating your own advertisement, which is the next section here, um, we've now got all sorts of bits and pieces available in terms of not only have we got resources in here in terms of the marks and what to do with them, but there's also all sorts of much more sort of useful information in terms of um, guidance for copywriting in terms of tone of voice, in terms of style, um, in terms of body copy examples you'll find in there. Um, there's also, um, go to this one for a moment, guidance in terms of use of imagery, in terms of making sure that uh, there is imagery. Um, So suggestions for correct use um, that you would expect and there's a sort of a style evolving here that is very much more dynamic it's very um, forward thinking it's very uh, strong and gutsy there's a sort of sort of blueiness running through it so it's also quite cohesive and the idea here is that you'll use these as a guide when, as a guide when commissioning new work, and this will sort of form your briefing in order to do that. Um, for those of you that aren't commissioning new, the image library, um, which is being sort of constantly updated, has all this new imagery um, in there, and I believe that's all sort of up and current. Is that correct, John? Uh, some of it is. There's the answer to that then. <laughs> Maybe not all, but, so. um, but there's, a, there's a good amount there to work with if it's something that you're not a adapting from current already. Uh, in terms of things that we don't want to happen, is there is no place in this um, for concept imagery, for using the sort of cliched, sort of getty type shots, that's uh, not something that uh, sits with this whole proposition. So um, very straightforwardly, you only have to look at those three images to really know what it is that shouldn't be going on there, and they form a very sort of good guide to that, I think. Um, in anticipation of the fact that there will be an awful lot of questions, there is a section on frequently asked questions. And that will save, save us having to go through quite a lot of those. So as a resource, um, our suggestion would be that you take home these URLs, that you have a dig round and familiarise yourself with it. I'm sure some of you already have because you've been actually working on materials already. So you'll have been uh, accessing this and trying to find your way around. Um, I don't think it's difficult to find your way around and hopefully those sorts of things that you do need to find are all going to be in here. 